So greetings to everyone and welcome to St. Dominic's Major Seminary and today there is going to be the diaconate ordination and Amimano from the Facebook page admins of St. Dominic's Major Seminary. And of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we begin to celebrate this rite in praise of God on the occasion of the unveiling of this beautiful image of St. Dominic for public veneration, we must be properly disposed and have a clear appreciation of the meaning of this celebration. When the church blesses a picture or a statue and presents it for public veneration for the faith, it does so for the following reasons. That when we look at the representation of those who followed Christ faithfully, we will be motivated to seek the city that is to come, that will learn the way that will enable us most surely to attain complete union with Christ. That as we struggle along with our earthly cares, we will be mindful of the saints, those friends and co-heirs of Christ, who are also our own brothers and sisters, and our special benefactors. That we will remember how they love us, are near us, intercede ceaselessly for us, and are joined to us in a marvelous communion. Lord, we bless you for you alone are holy. And because in your compassion for sinners, you sent into the world your son, Jesus Christ, the author and perfecter of holiness. He sent the spirit to sustain his newborn church, a voice that teaches us secrets of holiness, a breeze that strengthens and refreshes, a fire that sears our hearts in love, the seed of God that yields a harvest of grace. Today we praise you for the gifts of the Spirit bestowed on St. Dominic, in whose honor we dedicate this statue. May we follow in the footsteps of the Lord, keeping before us the example of St. Dominic, and grow to maturity, measured not by nature, but by the fullness of Christ. May we proclaim his gospel by word and deed, and shouldering our crosses daily, expend ourselves for others in your service. As we carry out our earthly duties, May we be filled with the Spirit of Christ and keep our eyes fixed on the glories of heaven where you, Father, receive those who will reign with your Son forever and ever.
let us pray. God, the crowning glory and the joy of all his saints has graciously given you the gift of their patronage. May he continue to bestow his blessing upon you. Amen.
from within and outside the circle. All men and women religious present here. The choir from Mary Immaculate Parish and the parishioners with our little dancing stars here in front. Friends of St. Dominic's and associate membership, the media, Reverend Deacon, seminarians, parents, and relatives to our diaconate candidates. Let me just say, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome to St. Dominic's Major Seminary. This morning we gather in this function of worship and prayer in the context of Mass, where we are going to witness the rising to the dignity of the Apollo, 27 brothers of ours. From this number, we have 20 candidates from St. Dominic's Major Seminary. And we have, from the congregation of the Minor Captain Franciscan Order, two brothers, and five brothers from the Order of Friars Minor Conventions. I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are here to pray. We are here to thank God for these gifts that we are going to receive from His gracious hands. Therefore, let us all join in in this act of worship and prayer while respecting the dignity of Brothers worship. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries.
whatever gift you have received to save others. As faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Jesus called them together and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to save and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Francisco. 
Saloda Malama Hagai Sababwa Elat From the order of Prime Minister Convention Chan Shi Joseph Obila Chunga Heleko Kalamba Anthony Kachinga John Sam Chimba Gende The Christian vocation is a response to the call of the Lord. We are called in different ways to serve the same Lord 
and as different parts of the same body, each one of us has a role to play. As we heard in the second reading, where it says, each one of you has received a special grace. So like good stewards responsible for these varied graces of God, put it at the service of others. What is the meaning of the word deacon? As we know, the word deacon means servant. But the fact is that we are all servants. And we should not just be expecting to be saved by the deacons whom we refer to as servants. All of us are held to the standard of Jesus Christ and his righteousness and holiness. But then these are brothers to be ordained by virtue of ordination. Deacons are placing themselves in a position of higher responsibility and accountability before God in their ministry of service. Jesus, in the Gospel of today, says, anyone who wants to be great among you must be your servant. And anyone who wants to be first among you must be your slave. We see here that Jesus is not against being great or being first. He's not against having a high position or being ambitious. That is why he says, anyone who wants there there is an expression of desire so it is okay to want to be first or to want to be great the only thing he cautions us to be aware of is that when we get to the position of being first or being great we should remember that we should remember what that position entails. So according to the logic of Jesus, if you want to be great, be a servant. If you want to be first, be a servant. <coughs> Let me now come to the first reading, where we see how the first deacons were chosen for the church. For my reflection, I have two questions in mind. One, why were deacons chosen? And number two, why were these particular men chosen? Why were deacons chosen? We heard in the reading that there was a crisis in the distribution of, of food as far as taking care of the widows was concerned. So deacons were chosen because there was a problem. They were called to a specific task. By living in this state with total dedication, moved by sincere love for Christ the Lord, you are consecrated to him in a new and special way. By this consecration, you adhere more easily to Christ with undivided hearts. You will be more freely at the service of God and mankind. You will be more unfamiliar in the ministry of Christian conversion and rebirth. By your life and character, you will give to your brothers and sisters in faith that God must be loved above all, all else, and that it is Him it is he who will serve in others. Therefore, I ask you, in the presence of God and the church, are you resolved as a sign of your interior dedication to Christ to remain celibate for the sake of the kingdom and in lifelong service to God and mankind? Amen. May the Lord help you to persevere in this commitment. Amen. My son.
sons, before you are ordained deacons, you must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. Are you willing to be ordained for the church ministry by the laying on of hands and the gift of the Holy Spirit? I am. Are you resolved to discharge the office of deacon with humility and love in order to assist the bishop and the priests and to serve the people of Christ? I am. Are you resolved to hold the mystery of faith with a clear conscience as the apostles as the apostle ages? and to proclaim this faith in word and action as it is taught by the gospel and the church tradition? I am. Are you resolved to maintain and deepen a spirit of prayer appropriate to your way of life and in keeping with what is required of you to celebrate faithfully the liturgy of the hours for the church and for the whole world? I am. Are you resolved to shape your way of life always according to the example of Christ, whose body and blood you will give the people? I am with the help of God. And obedience to your ordinary. I do. May God who has begun the good work in you bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to your ordinary? I do. May God who has begun the good work in you bring it to fulfillment. You promise respect and obedience to your ordinary. I do. May God who has begun the good work in you bring it to fulfillment.
gospel of Christ, whose herald you now are. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach.
sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Holy Father, whose Son chose to wash the disciples' feet and set us an example, accept, we pray, the offerings of our service and grant that offering ourselves as a spiritual sacrifice, we may be filled with a spirit of humility and zeal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant. And by your wondrous design, we are pleased to decree that many ministries be exercised in the church. For Christ not only adorns with the royal priesthood, the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. He chooses them to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word, and strengthen them with the sacraments. And they give, up, they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters. They strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. With all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord. And all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, gracious to make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. <laughs>
Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
as they promote vocations to ordained ministry and to consecrated life. Dear brothers and sisters who work with us, let us thank God for this precious gift. I also thank you very, very sincerely for your tireless efforts. It's at times in very, very difficult working conditions. Men, the work of your hands, be blessed by the mighty I can invite my heart and my mind to God in gratitude. As I wish each one of you God's richest blessings in everything that you do and in all your experiences. Thank you very much. The rector of St. Dominic's Major Seminary, the guest of honor, distinguished invited guests, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, allow me to write on the protocols that have already been given. I remember in the year 2019, I was appointed to come and be lecturer and formator here at St. Dominic's Major Seminary. <coughs> when I came, these young men we are ordaining today were in their first year. So they were the first class that I had in the course of common law when I came here. And it's good today to see you, my brothers, that we have reached this far. Congratulations and thank you for responding generously to the call of the Lord. I invite you to live a life worthy of your calling. May I reiterate some of the things that have already been mentioned? I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank all those who are involved in your formation, the newly ordained deacons, both in the seminary, in the different stages of seminary formation, formation houses, and elsewhere. Because formation does not just take place in the seminary or house of formation. To all of you, I say thank you for this noble task that you are doing. The work of formation is very important for the future of the church. The kind of priests we are going to have will depend to some measure on the type of formation that they received. Equally, I express my gratitude to your families, parents and guardians who played a big role in bringing you up in the faith. I believe it was in your family that a fertile ground was prepared for you to hear the call of the Lord and respond to it. We thank them for all the values they imparted in you as little boys which have made you unique persons all through. In them, we see how the family is the foundation of every vocation. We thank them for offering, to you, offering you to serve the Lord in the church and for the various ways they nurtured and supported you in your journey of formation. May the Lord continue to richly bless them. To all of you, my dear brothers and sisters, I thank you for the various ways in which you support the seminary and other houses of formation by giving today for coming to witness and give support in this celebration. 
Let us continue to pray for more vocations and even to be involved in vocation promotion. Vocation promotion and support for priestly training is everyone's responsibility. Thank you very much for the role that you played. Lastly, but not the least, to you, my dear seminarians, and all those in formation, I exhort you to take your vocation seriously and take a personal responsibility for your formation. Yes, other people are there to encourage, accompany, and guide you. But the larger part of formation depends on you. Each one of you is a protagonist of your own, of your own formation. You are the one who has to internalize in an authentic way the priestly way of life. No one can do it for you. I invite you to open your hearts to the process of formation with humility in order for you to grow into the kind of priests that the church wants. Those who are graduating, your graduation is not a graduation from Christian life. It is actually the beginning of the commitment to living out your Christian life and your vocation. I invite you to take seriously the next step that is happening to you and live it out according to what the Lord calls you to do. Be good ambassadors of the seminary, be good ambassadors of the church, be good ambassadors of Christ. Thank you very much. Peace be with you. Bow your heads for God's blessing. May God who has called you to the service of others in this church give you great zeal for all, especially the afflicted and the poor. Amen. Amen. May he who has entrusted you with preaching the gospel of Christ help you as you live according to his word to be sincere and fervent witnesses. Amen. Amen. May he who has appointed you stewards of his mysteries make you imitators of his Son, Jesus Christ, and ministers of unity and peace in the world. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all who are gathered here, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Amen.